Hey, on today's Coffee Chat, we're going to be chatting with actress Alex Jade, who appears in the upcoming Mayors of Kingstown. Stay tuned. Hey Alex, how are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. By the way, amazing intro. Oh my god, like that was awesome. I was well, like, oh, you. I can't wait to keep watching this. This is great. <laughs> yeah, we we made a couple upgrades since season one. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks amazing. Truly, congrats. Thank you so much. Um, you so for cool. the. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you just joining us, this is actress Alex Jade, and she appears in the upcoming Mayors of Kingstown. She can't talk too much about it because it's still hush hush. So you'll just have to stay tuned for updates on that by following Alex on Instagram. Uh, Alex, do you want to give a little extra bio for those that don't know you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I always love this question. It's like, tell us a little bit about yourself. I don't I don't ever know what to say. Uh, but well, I noticed on your I'm you're you're on I I can't talk blah 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 on your IMDb. I noticed you have a background in PR, which is pretty cool. I do. Yeah, I went to. Um, I actually ended up. Okay, let me rewind. So from the very very beginning, I I started dancing when I was two and a half. So I was always on okay. on stage performing. Ballet was yeah. my my jam. And then I knew that I wanted to be a performer and an actress. Ever since I was a kid. And then, you know, the older you get, the more your yeah. parents and society drills into you that, you know, maybe being an artist may not be the most sustainable occupation. Um, <laughs> I know many people could relate to that, but they never said, don't do it. They did. They, my parents were always very yeah. supportive. They just said, you might want to look into something else. So, yeah. I, um, yeah. So they said, well, if you want to be on TV, being a journalist would be something to look into mm -hmm. and news anchor. And yeah. I decided to, I, I always knew I'm thinking like, I like that idea, but it doesn't feel yeah. right to me. So okay. I went to university. I signed up to be, uh, I went to the University of Guelph Humber. I tried to become a journalist through that communications program that they had. And then I realized, unfortunately, during orientation that it wasn't for me. And okay. I realized that this is going to be my life if I don't if I don't stop it right now. And I had passed all the exams. Yeah. I had done everything. And yeah. um, I told the counselor, I said, you know what? I actually don't want to be a journalist. And she goes, you probably have cold feet. Like, it's, it's totally fine. And I said, no, I actually, yeah. with all the streams, I think I should probably go into PR because yeah. PR you know, I need to learn how to sell myself and, and other people yeah. or the, the projects that I do, businesses, et cetera. So I feel like I'm going to get more out of mm. that. And so after a long discussion, they said, okay. And so I ended up finishing yeah. graduating and uh, I did a little bit of PR work and it was fun, but something was still inside of me saying, I really need to get back into the arts. And, uh, mm. and then I became a flight attendant and uh for like as a summer job that lasted and I then i was saying that last time yeah mm -hmm. and then i ended up going into uh pr i mean into acting from that whole whole idea of being a journalist etc and but anyway yes i graduated yeah. and i do know i'm technically a publicist by trade that's really cool though because i feel like that's a good skill set to have especially in the the entertainment industry, right? Because we need to know how to market ourselves because we're a business. And I feel like that's a missing piece of the puzzle for a lot of people getting into this industry is they don't have the business and the marketing skills. They just, they go into it thinking, okay, I want to act, right? And they don't yeah. realize all the other aspects that go with it. So Absolutely. I feel like that's a really good trait for you to have. Have you found like that's benefited you at all or? Um, I I, I think so. But I mean, with, I, I feel like you're the person to talk more about this. Like you are on point and so up to date. I feel like, you know, I don't, I don't want to age myself, but you know, things change so quickly from the point yeah. that I graduated that like even last year, things have changed. Right. And new social media and everything. I think that the world is so different now 
that. Yeah, see, yeah, it's changing a lot. Um, but I, I feel like it's still like a learning curve for everyone though, because mm-hmm. it is changing so fast. Like all of a sudden Instagram has links for everyone. Yeah, totally. hundred percent, hundred percent. It's, um, but I definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely transferable yeah. skills, people skills, yeah. Uh, just knowing at the end of the day, it comes to telling a story, right? And so that's where mm-hmm. it really applies because in PR, you're trying to sell stories and yeah. um, and you're trying to tell the stories to the journalists who will then, yeah. you know, hear the news. And in acting, it's just, I feel like that with a twist, with an artistic edge, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. See, my background is just learning everything through my company and as mm-hmm. a result of it, I've picked up um, graphic design, website design, like that type of marketing skill, right? Where I don't have like the PR knowledge. Like I've I've run Facebook ads, I've run Google ads, like that type of stuff. But I've never done like the PR, like pitching myself because with my cake business, I would always just get like phone calls or offers from people. Do you want to come on and do like a cake teaching segment on Rogers TV and be like, sure, cool. And that's kind of the cake company is what led to eventually to the acting, but I've never had the PR training up until now, where now I'm going through a mastermind to learn the PR portion of it. So mm-hmm. you're like, you're like the opposite where you've got like all the PR stuff yeah. <laughs> and you're like, you're now getting into like website and stuff, right? I remember you talking exactly. about you need to get like a website going. Yeah. Totally, so I yeah. feel like we're like, we're at opposite ends. We but complete each other, is- Jen. We complete each other. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever need help with any of the other, I can totally help you. <laughs> Vice versa. We'll do a swap. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think honestly, the the main thing that it comes down to oh, is, and you do, yeah. like I said, I'm, I can go on and on about how awesome you are, truly, <laughs> because you're really good at what you do. But I mean, the word of mouth and just reaching yeah. out is really... Yeah the thing that really, really helps the most, right? I mean, because you creating loyalty with your, you know, the people Mm -hmm. that you talk to and just having a true relationship, just genuinely caring, just genuinely caring about the other person, developing a a relationship, nurturing it with them. And then whatever you Mm -hmm. truly decide or whatever you like, you know, the person will trust your opinion. So if they do, then Mm -hmm. let's say I'm selling something, then if you genuinely believe what I'm saying and you trust my opinions and my judgments yeah. and, and whatnot, then it's more likely for you to want to look into it more, you know? Um, yeah, and then, for sure. Yeah. So that's no, really, I it's worth- <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with that because if you don't have those relationships, sorry, that's my dog getting up and moving. If you can hear that, uh, if you don't have those relationships, it's, you, you're going to have a hard time in any industry getting forward. Like this, the old saying, your network is your net worth, right? Totally. And it's true because referrals and relationships will get you so much further than running a Facebook ad or a Google ad or whatever ad you want to run. Because when you're running ads, it's usually to cold traffic. Whereas when you have those relationships and those referrals, then you have already like a warm lead to whatever you're doing and leads in this industry where we are is like casting directors, producers, directors, right? But leads in any business is any warm lead is better than cold traffic any day because you're more likely to get somewhere. But when you have that genuine connection, when you actually give a crap about somebody, then they start to want to bring you in on stuff without having to like even go and ask, right? So mm-hmm. absolutely. And just and sh- like the it all applies. It all kind of comes down to the same thing, right? In yeah. sales, right? You need to know and and PR yeah. and even in this industry, like you just need to know how to sell. You need to be good in sales, really. Mm-hmm. Sales, uh selling yourself, <laughs> selling your project, selling. You just need to be good. And then that yeah. comes down to relationships. And I mean, I haven't had specific mm-hmm. sales training, but I I have done mm-hmm. some sales in my past. And I remember yeah. um, I did a promotion once for, I used to work for like a promo mm-hmm. company briefly. And okay. um, I, again, I think we may have mentioned before, but I like my wine. So I'm definitely a wino. And I remember doing this one promotion for Chloe Wines, Californian wine, which I absolutely yeah. love. And I remember mm-hmm. this promotion was me going to the LCBO and just kind of talking about this wine and selling the wine. And so okay. 
actually like I'm really not trying to gloat or anything, but like all the bottles flew off the shelves. And yeah. people, and my boss at the time calls me, he's like, What are you telling people? And yeah. I'm like, that the wine is really good and that I would yeah. like I drink it all the time and I genuinely love it. And I guess the communication and the relationship bonding and and all of that. Yeah. I was like, if you don't want it, don't get it. If you don't like wine, don't get it. Like it's it's really yeah. up to you. Like you you decide what wine you want to drink, but I'm letting you know right. that this is a great thing. Mm -hmm. And when I realized it wasn't even about the wine, it was just about the yeah. interaction and the relationship that I was creating with mm -hmm. people and strangers. Yeah. yeah. So it yeah. it's just about people. And that's people and relationships. Yeah, and that's good marketing. What you're doing right there is a prime example of good marketing because you're just talking about something you love and marketing ourselves gets such a bad rap or marketing in general mm. gets such a bad rap, I feel, with people because of like, ew, icky marketing. And it's like, if you just think of it as, a, okay, so you referred like a movie to your friend the other week, you were marketing that movie, right? Totally. You're just talking about the things that you loved about it. So marketing yourself is the same way, right? Like you're just talking about yourself in a way that people are going to lean into, like those lean in stories, right? So yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. How do you um, how do you find yourself with marketing yourself? Like, how do you how how does that? Because I had this conversation not long ago, and I found yeah. there's a lot of people who just feel kind of icky, like marketing themselves, yeah. right? Because we were just talking about that has like a bad rep, but it's true. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And yeah. it's actually a very good thing. And like, we need to know yeah. how to do that. And it's a skill that I think anybody in the industry really needs to have. So, and you do yeah. such a good job. So I'm just curious to hear about like, how, like, what are your feelings about everything? Like, what what are your, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. about this thing? Well, I approach it where as it's not just about me. Because when I'm marketing myself, it's always about what I can bring to the table to help other mm -hmm. people, Right. So if you're approaching it about, oh, look at me, look at me, look at me, of course, it's going to feel kind of like icky, right? But if you're approaching mm -hmm. it as like, okay, well, I have these skills, for this thing that you're working on, um, so I could be an asset to what you're working on. And that way, it's like mm -hmm. I'm helping somebody, in the, but I'm still marketing myself to that project. Or mm -hmm. uh, even when like you're talking about like anything to do with your business or anything to do with acting, like approach your marketing from how you are bringing other people in and helping them, if that makes sense. Mm, totally. So like, absolutely. Even when you're talking about a project, like I was in this, but like, uh, thanks so much to the cast and crew. You were just, like super talented absolutely. when you're like talking about like, oh, like, oh, look at me, see me in scene five, right? Like yeah. talk about like the cast and the crew and how much you appreciated being on that production first. And like, oh, and I'm in this too, right? Like check me out in like scene five, I have this role. Right. So yeah. it's always like bringing other people along the journey with you. And I feel like that makes it less icky and helping people. If you approach it as helping others, then it doesn't totally. feel icky as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. And yeah. it, it's interesting you say that because even yeah. when you said, um, you know, Mayor of Kingstown, like I'm beyond grateful for being in that production. But yeah. it's true. I was still on set being like, oh, what is happening? Like, how, like, these are such incredible people. That I'm yeah. working with, and this is such an incredible project. And like, it, I felt like it was all about the people, you know, like about everybody that yeah. was around me. And like, I was just doing my thing, you know, enjoying yeah. what I do. But I, you know, like, mm. it just comes back to this the the thing I keep saying. It's all about the people in the community. And because one person exactly. standing alone doesn't do anything. Like, you can stand and you can tell your story a hundred percent. And it's more than welcome, yeah. but it's going to have the same impact if you are with a team, you know? That's why, you know, find your vibe yeah. tribe. Find your tribe and and just keep. Yeah. And if you're doing something powerful and all together, it just yeah. just magnifies and it makes it, it makes it wonderful and impactful. So I guess that yeah. creates that feeling of goodness and greatness. Exactly. And like yeah. if with anything, like anything that we're doing in the entertainment industry is usually a team effort, right? So totally. trying to make the sole focus on yourself, it really isn't true to begin with anyways, right? Like you played a role in that, but there's this entire team behind this thing that you're putting out. So yeah. making sure yeah. that you bring them along the ride <laughs> for whatever you're marketing. Yeah. And then just, if the, the last thing I wanted to touch on 
um, with that, before I, we move subjects, is Christine mm-hmm. Horn. I don't know if you know Christine Horn. Uh, she's called the Booking Magnet. She's got mm-hmm. a quote behind her when she's doing like her Instagram videos that says, uh, you can't be a secret in a success, which is true, mm-hmm. right? Like you can't hide and expect to get anywhere. So marketing yeah. is a necessity because you need to talk about what you do and how you can help people in order to get from like A to B. So yeah. Absolutely. And it's also really good for you to be able to, yeah. um, I was actually talking to one of my, uh, my former acting coaches and she was just, mm-hmm. we were talking about how like you need to take wins for yourself too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, marketing and expressing, you know, your successes and talking about that yeah. is a very good thing as well, because you're teaching mm-hmm. your body that it's totally okay to be I guess getting familiar with winning and taking those wins and taking yeah. those successes and that it's not a bad mm. thing. Like if you work hard yeah. and just being proud of yourself and then the more you can yeah. actually, and I think that all comes down to the whole self-love thing and being able yeah. to you know you deserve that, like that success. And yeah, mm. absolutely. And if you share that success, you could also be mm. an inspiration. Like it doesn't have to be, um, the negative side of what people sometimes think. Yeah. No, that's the other subject I want to touch on you with because you're big into the mindset too, which I love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, like, I've been seeing stories lately of different like negative things. Like I don't know if you know, saw Ginny's story, but she had gotten a role and then it got taken away and stuff um, and got offered to somebody else. And like I've experienced things where I was offered a role and it got taken away because they wanted somebody thinner to play the female hero and – like there's mm-hmm. stuff like that and this is this industry and then on top of it before you even get roles you have all the rejection of okay well I was submitted for like 170 things and I got like eight auditions or I got these eight auditions and I only got like two callbacks or like, ty- yep. like types of stuff like that for actors and it's just putting up with that rejection and how do you stay positive and keep going into it? Because most people that get like a little bit of rejection, they're like, okay, like screw this, like let's move on. And we like take that like every week. Like a drug. And And how are you finding that you deal with that stuff lately? Cause I'm finding like it's a, it's more mental work now that we've been through the pandemic. Right. Yeah. We've had that hit too. Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. Um, mm. You know, I think taking one day at a time, taking it, and it sounds cliche, but it's like taking it one mm. day at a time and taking yeah. one audition for us actors, mm-hmm. one audition at a time, one booking yeah. at a time. I think that for myself, and I mean, this is what kind of my strategy, like I try mm-hmm. to do it, be in the moment just mm-hmm. to do the audition and be like, yeah. whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. Even though I know I'm like perfect for this role in my mind, right? And I'm I'm like so right. many people might be thinking that they're the exact same thing, right? Which is mm-hmm. the interesting part. But even yeah. if you remember, or in this case, if I remember to just be present mm-hmm. in that character moment and be like, this yeah. is my job. Auditioning is my yeah. job and I'm having fun doing it. And I know it's hard sometimes and like the whole logistics of it, setting up self tapes mm-hmm. these days, you know, get it or in, oh, yeah. in the, in the room, right. You know, driving there, figuring it out, um, whatever. Yeah. But when you have those moments to play during that audition and mm-hmm. taking that as like the conclusion, as in like, I started, I memorized, I mm-hmm. learned my lines, I prepared for it. I did the audition mm-hmm. conclusion, whether I book or yeah. I don't book. To me, I mean, of course I want to book it, but to me, that's kind of like a bonus. So I guess the mindset of my job is auditioning and having fun in that moment. And if I book, it's Mm -hmm. a bonus and it's like extra money, right? Like it's Mm -hmm. extra fun. Um, And it's a great learning experience, right? But I think with the rejection aspect of it, Like it doesn't Mm. seem so big, right? Because if you focus on the big picture and like, I've had so many auditions and I didn't get any of them. Mm. And, you know, um, or if you are on hold, like I've been, I've been on Mm. hold a few times, like in in a small period of time. And like, I didn't get any of them. Right. Yeah. 
And, you know, on a one hand, it's a compliment. It's like, great. I'm on, you know, yeah. I'm, they're checking my availability, but on the other yeah. hand, I didn't get it again, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that is such an emotional roller coaster and oh, yeah. it's hard. It's so hard. But yeah. when you know that they're like, if I don't look at it as a big thing, mm -hmm. then it seems not as bad if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and being I on think hold is hard and getting let go. <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. That I always used to say, I'm like, you know, I don't, I actually don't even want to know. Like, I, I don't yeah. even tell me. Like, unless I book it, please yeah. just, you know. Yeah. My but. kids were both on hold for a commercial, one of my, my sons and one of my daughters. And they ended up booking my son and my daughter was on hold too and they let her go and they put somebody else in as his sister for the commercial oh. so <laughs> so it's oh. even harder when you're children <laughs> yeah yeah exactly because you take it you take it personally yeah. but I guess and it's so hard because everybody says yeah. don't take it personally but it's so hard not yeah. to take it personally but if you yeah. look at it it was just recently I was actually thinking about mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. I kind of thought of it as like a blank canvas. Cause like I said, every yeah. audition is like a separate thing. So it's like a blank yeah. canvas. Right? You start off with like a palette of various colors and you're painting, you're painting, you know, you're doing your audition and mm -hmm. you know, every audition you have a different palette of colors. Right. And yeah. sometimes it turns into a masterpiece. Sometimes it doesn't. And that's why, you know, you really have to have fun in the process, but yeah. at the end of the day, like with art, because that's what we're doing. You know, you go mm -hmm. to a museum, you go to a gallery and like one painter, like I love yeah. Monet. Right. But some people right. may not love Monet. Right. And they might be like, well, I don't, I don't know many people who are just like, Oh, Monet. <laughs> right. But <laughs> I'm saying if somebody sees an art, they're allowed not to enjoy it or like it or not right. see it the same way as somebody else does. Right. And that's the whole like right. eye of the beholder beauty is in the eye mm -hmm. of the beholder. Um, yeah. So I think that like when you really think about that part of it, where it's, mm -hmm. this is art, not everybody sees art the same way. And it's, mm -hmm. it might be, you know, and it keeps going back to like one man's junk yeah. is another man's treasure. It's the same thing, right? right? All perspective. So yeah. knowing and kind of taking yourself out of it and being like, okay, mm -hmm objectively, mm -hmm. I could take it personally, or I could look at it as yeah. it's just a person has a different preference and it's not me. It's just, they don't mm -hmm. see the same colors as I do. You know, you yeah. can look, and there's so many people who are, let's say colorblind, right. Who can't see certain colors and right. they, it's, they see such a gorgeous world in their own eyes. Right. But somebody who yeah. sees differently just sees different colors or colors get mixed mm -hmm. up or you'll say like this color is red. Another person will say it's green or brown, you know, it's, mm -hmm. I'm going on a tangent, but I guess what I'm trying to say is if you look at it as an art piece that is just being yeah. watched, then mm -hmm. you kind of can't take it personally because it's a preference. Yeah. Right. Do, yeah. Do you ever go like left brain analytical and look at the data if like if like you're not getting auditions or bookings, do you ever go back to like the data and be like, oh, can I see my submission report and I want to see who's not bringing me in or um, look it back? Do you like audition track and see who's bringing you in constantly and try and like troubleshoot where there might be a problem? Like for mm. I'm saying this too for new actors too, right? Like if you're yeah. not getting auditions, then this might be the problem. Or if you're getting auditions and you're not getting callbacks, then this might be the problem, right? So. Yeah. You know, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore mm -hmm. Okay, because I found seeing the facts and figures, like just numbers. Like I'm not a numbers person yeah. anymore. Right. Like I, yeah. I never was. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that if I look at that, mm -hmm. that might make me a little bit more. Um, harder, harder mindset. <laughs> yeah. But I think it, I think it would take away from my art. Yeah. You know, like I see, I think it's, that's why I have my agent. And that's why I think it's so mm -hmm. important to have a good agent and yeah. a manager and people who are looking out for you in the business side of things. 
mm-hmm. so that they deal with the numbers and the facts and the figures and all of that. But myself, as the artist, I feel like mm-hmm. my job here is to trust, which is difficult. Mm-hmm. My job is to trust and just do, yeah. just be the artist and be, mm-hmm. you know, do what I possibly can do to mm-hmm. market myself, to put myself in the best light. But at the yeah. end of the day, if I start thinking more business, mm-hmm. especially when I'm like as an overall, right? Of course, it's super important mm-hmm. to know all both sides and take evaluate, like, you know, evaluate ever so often, of mm-hmm. course, have chats. Like I do have chats with my agents sometimes, but I don't, mm-hmm. it's more of kind of like a, based on what you've realized or what you see, is there something yeah. that I can maybe do better? Or is there something mm-hmm. that we should look into? Should I be doing something more or less? Should I change my look? Whatever that yeah. is. And just trust her opinion. And, mm-hmm. you know, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know? And for some yeah. people, if they're, you can stare at a sheet and of, you know, you can stare at all your submissions, but if you're mm-hmm. not getting anything, it mm-hmm. could be you, or it could be that your agent's not pushing you. Right. Yeah. Or it could be that it's not that that dynamic is not uh, the best for you. So that's where mm-hmm. I would personally suggest maybe look into another agent. Right. Maybe look into mm-hmm. somebody who is more aligned with you. Um, as long as you don't forget that you are the artist and you are you're just looking for you're hiring someone to work for mm-hmm. you. And that's your agent and you need to trust them. So, and you let mm-hmm. them do the facts and figures type of thing, you know, of course, be yeah, smart I've about heard it, from, evaluate. Yeah. I've heard that from both perspectives um, because I heard another perspective where like, you should think of them as like a team, right. And then you're mm-hmm. equally responsible for creating those relationships mm-hmm. with people so that casting knows who the heck you are. So you just like get brought in and then just checking, like when you're starting out, just checking out the data. Okay, is this casting director bringing me in constantly? Well, then I know I'm doing a good job at my additions, right? But if they're not bringing me in constantly, then maybe I need to like reevaluate and get some more audition training, like that type of data. Um, or if like I'm auditioning, but I'm not getting callbacks, then maybe there's something to tweak there that I need to still tweak in my auditioning mm-hmm. skills. Um, because there's also auditioning skills in the room and auditioning skills for self-tapes, right? Um, oh, absolutely. So that, so that's the type of data that I, I, I come from both. I got, I got like the creative yeah. brain because like the cake artistry, but then I've got like the left brain analytical because I've had a business since I was 20. So they, they, yes, like, they meet in the middle. <laughs> Sometimes no, it drives absolutely, me nuts. Absolutely. And both are, both are important, right? Um, I'm yeah. not, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying yeah. for yeah. myself, I find it's uh, having yeah. those check-in conversations. Mm-hmm. And trusting my agent and my manager, like yeah. I feel like that's something that mm-hmm. I want to put them in that role. And yeah. I, when we do have those conversations, I exactly I ask for the feedback. Have you heard any yeah. feedback from any casting directors? And mm-hmm. I have. Like I've, I've, my agent will say she's very much, and I think that's the open communication where, you yeah. know, I'm open to constructive criticism. I'm open to having discussions. I want to hear yeah. it. Because I'm not scared of the criticism. And I think yeah. that's where a lot of people do get a little bit like, mm, you know, where they're no they're knows. avoiding. They're like, <laughs> I don't want to know what you're going to say. And I don't, yeah. you know, but it's something really humbling just knowing that you're not perfect. You're not yeah. going to be the best, prettiest, smartest, uh, youngest, yeah. greatest person. You know, mm-hmm. you're just going to be you. And I think, again, it comes back to, the self-love confidence thing and knowing that yeah. whatever you offer is very different from the other person, even though they look mm-hmm. the same, uh, they, they look very similar. They, they seem mm-hmm. very similar. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bringing yourself to the role and all you can do is be the best version of you. <laughs> yeah, it, really. it's, true. It's, it's so cliche, but it's true. Right. Because that's what shines through. I, I did a movie recently and the comment I keep getting is like, Oh, you're so natural on screen. Like, because I was, because they're like improv this. So it was just my personality coming out on screen as the store clerk, right? And that's, I, I used to be like, when I first started acting, I'd be like trying to like 
shove myself into this role and become this character. And now I'm bringing myself to the role, if that makes sense. So you're still becoming a character, but you're bringing you into it instead of being like, okay, see you later, you, and be like, now I'm this person, right? Like in what circumstance could I be this person? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't even like, I find it fascinating how people can actually do that. Like I don't know any other way, but being myself in those roles, like I can take on different circumstances, Mm -hmm. but it still has like, I can't because yeah. you can't mimic someone or else it doesn't come out right. Yeah. I don't I don't think. Uh yeah. so well, and that's when you feel disconnected too, right? Because totally. it's like, okay, I'm trying to be this other person. And like I I switched um acting training and styles, mm-hmm. and that's when it finally went, oh, click, okay, cool. And now I can just bring me to the role and I can start I can like I can add in a hook here and I can do this. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's that, right? It's sometimes it's just like finding like that acting coach or that trainer or technique that just like turns on a light and be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Um there was uh no a hundred percent. And every single person, mm-hmm. every coach has a different thing to offer. Yeah. And uh teaches you something different. But because mm-hmm. we're talking about coaches and and all of this. Yeah. I, I wanted to know what your, I'll tell you mine after I hear yours, but I want to know what the last piece of advice was from a coach for you, whether it's technical or not technical, what's yeah. the advice that you recently got from a coach that kind of like stuck with you? Um, so after we're done going through the scene, they asked me, was it fun? And if it wasn't fun, then when we bring more fun to the role. Because mm. when you're having fun, you light yourself up when you're acting and you bring yeah. it like, it doesn't, like that, that like fun, like as in funny, but like you're having fun doing it, right? Mm. Um, you're not like forcing yourself into something in the role, like it's, it's fun. So, and I love that about my coach because it, it wasn't fun for the first year of my acting training. It was like, it was stressful. It was super stressful, the technique I was trying to do and the the teachers and stuff I had. And I was like, do I really want to do this? And then I found a coach in a school that lights me up and like you leave class and you're like exhilarated, right? Because they help you bring fun to the role and it, it shows up on screen, right? Even if you're like doing like super dramatic crying stuff, you can still have fun doing it. I, I know that sounds like up like cliche or opposite ends of the spectrum, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree. I totally, totally agree. And I and I'm so happy for it. Like I'm so happy that you actually because sometimes you hear bits of advice like that and it doesn't sink in. So I'm happy that it did for you. Because even when you talk about it, your face lights up, which is so wonderful to see. Yeah. And so you can it seems I think that that is a perfect example of you were on the right yeah. track doing what you should be doing. Because if you were having fun yeah. and you were having, you feel joy from whatever you are doing, you yeah. know, talking about things, doing things, then you're on the right track. <laughs> like, yeah, that's well, yeah, because of- happiness, happiness is success, right? Like, if I, exactly. I hate when we like, I hate when we measure success by money because it should really be measured by happiness, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if we talked about this before, but uh, I was doing this one course online about the science of happiness. Okay. And uh, it was actually talking about experiences. Experiences bring people more joy than materialistic Mm -hmm. things. And so when you have a career based on experiences and these experiences are all kinds of experiences, you know, Mm -hmm. you can have so much fun doing it. Right. You know, if you put into an occupation or, you know, I don't even call it a job. Like, honestly, my acting is my hobby, my love, my passion. But like whatever role I'm doing, yeah. even if it's what you were just saying, even if it's a dramatic role, you could totally have fun doing that because you're yeah. you're experiencing something so big and so mm. different, you know, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. No, I think that's great. I yeah. think that's absolutely great. Yeah, for sure. And what, you, what's the best advice you've gotten recently? The best <laughs> advice I got recently was don't be a helicopter mom to your artist. Okay. And that to me spoke a lot because 
I feel that because when I do get in my head, actually, mm-hmm. I'm analyzing, judging, I'm being too technical. Mm-hmm. This is why I was saying yeah. always go back to the art. Yeah. When I do get too much in my head and I'm I'm trying to direct myself. Yeah. That I and when I'm trying to be a control freak of my own artist, it doesn't yeah. work out. <laughs> like that's not I can't. It doesn't come out the same way. That's where yeah. the director is there. And that is why the, you know, the other, uh, the whole hmm. team, this is why we were talking about, it's a team effort because exactly. they, that's their job, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, I should be yeah. aware and I need to be able to interact with everybody and have a good relationship with those people. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I can't be controlling my, like my, my artist because right. then I'm putting limits on myself. And as an artist, mm-hmm. it should be completely outside the box. Like it should be completely right. free. Whatever you do with that. Yeah. So no, I whatever. totally agree with that. Right? Yeah. So I yeah. thought that was interesting. And, and I, yeah. And I feel like that's how I was too when I first started, right? Because I felt like I had to like meet all these expectations of this mm-hmm. technique I was learning. Um and then I wasn't having fun doing it. Yeah. Uh, so then you get in your head like, oh, well, I suck. Or maybe I'm not cut out for this or blah, 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 blah. blah. Like, why am I even bothering to take this class? And you just, yeah. you you beat yourself up when you get in your head, right? Like, oh, I should have, like, I should have, like, gone down on that word and gone up on this inflection here. Like, it just, yeah, you need to stay out of your head. <laughs> Absolutely. Like even just saying that, I'm like, what? No, I can't do that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Like uh, now it's, uh, I lead with emotion instead of analytical thinking, right? Like uh, I love the one, uh, so I've been training with Perlman acting lately. Um, It's like Joseph Perlman and Annie Chang and them. Um, And they teach, it's on YouTube too. If you want to go and check out one of their videos, um, they have YouTube videos to talk about this and you can also like audit classes and stuff for anybody who's watching this. Uh, They start with a hook, right? So you find that one sentence that brings out that emotion, the hook that leads you into the emotion so that you're no longer acting, right? That one sentence that lights you up, that brings that emotion that you just go right into the scene. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. That's what turned on the light for me. It's like, okay. So I just, I think of the hook of what I need to start that emotion. And then the emotion carries me through the scene. So, so do you do that just before you start the whole scene or do you do that somewhere within the scene? No, I I do it before I start the scene. So like if it's it's a dramatic scene or I'm angry or I'm happy, I find a hook. Like usually it's like a couple words that just leads you into it. Right. So like, um, if it's like, oh, I, I'm so angry at you, like Alex, like, I can't believe you just did that, right? Like, if you like, so, like, I can't believe I just did that, and then went into the scene, like, you've got that emotion inside and you just go, right? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That's great. I would love to do so, a scene with you. I'd love to work with you. Every <laughs> time we need to do that. Yeah. We do. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like that'd be fun, like, getting everyone together and putting together, like, our own little, like, short film. Especially like the people yeah. from the chick fight. <laughs> totally. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. I would love to do that. Things like that. And just, yeah, bringing community together, right? Bringing exactly. amazing women who are talented, mm-hmm. who are fun. Yeah. How can you not yeah. have fun with, with fun people? Right. You know? So I chick mean, fight, like chick fight during the pandemic and chick fight like post post totally. lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. We'll have to find out if you ever went on your bubble date. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, oh, yeah, that's how, yeah, that's how I finished off. That was, uh, speaking of Bumble and all of that stuff, um, <laughs> online dating. Are you, um, like, what are your thoughts? I was having this conversation recently about dating and online dating and things like that. And yeah. the new generations of like how you meet people. And now there's, yeah, I, yeah, I'm married, so I don't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> I've I've never personally done the online dating thing, but I know my husband currently, he did that before he met me. And I feel like it's like hit and miss for people, right? Um, yeah. My my ex, my, my kids, uh, my older four's father, they, their dad met his new wife through online dating. So it works for some people and it doesn't work for others. 
Um, yeah. But I feel like that's like the the nature of the world we're in right now is everything's yeah. online. So yeah. yeah, but I it, like just it's trans. I just find it so fascinating. Like I think it's so great for people to be able to connect yeah. that way, and that is the way the world is going. But I just yeah, find it are. interesting because now there's like Bumble Friend or Bumble Date, or there's not just Bumble, but like there are other ways yeah. to like connect and network online yeah. as opposed to doing it in person. And I just wish that we could do it more often in person, which makes me so happy that we're right. able to get out now. And yeah, for uh, sure. after lockdown, like that was, it was tough. Yeah. <laughs> we will have to get something in the books. Um, oh, we were, well, I can't believe we've been talking for 40 minutes. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> um, so we're at the end mark now is there anything that you really want to leave people with where can they find you what can they check you out with in upcoming productions uh well i stay tuned for mayor kingstown it's uh it's airing november 14th on paramount plus and uh besides that you can find me i'm mostly on instagram at the alex jade and uh i'm sure based on all the links that you have here uh Definitely reach out to me, whatever way you wish to reach out to me, and I will do my best to respond in a timely manner. And uh, awesome. I, I love helping people and responding. You know, if people have questions about their own journey, my journey, or where to go or what to do, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't have anything to do with acting, like if there's any way that I can count that I can make someone's day by helping them out or making their life a little bit easier. Yeah. I don't see why I wouldn't do that. So, uh, and it's a, it's a great way to just connect with people. And again, full circle, I think it's all about the people. It's all about being together as a whole community. And I mean, the world, the world wouldn't be, the world would be pretty lonely and pretty blah. If it was just, I mean, you could have all the, like all the self love, yeah. you know, all the different personality traits, et cetera. You could even start playing with different scenarios, but the people yeah. in your life make your life so amazing. And so I think the only thing that I would say to conclude that would be if you haven't reached out, because I know a lot of people during these times have yeah. isolated themselves because it's been really tough. And, and I understand that. And some people are introverts. Yeah. And they want to be alone. Uh, yeah. I think it's important to do that, but I think it's very, very important to at least reach out to one person, one person, even in a day, mm -hmm. even a week, if that's too hard. Yeah. You know? Awesome. Uh, yeah. So reach out, yeah. reach out I, to people. I totally agree with that. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for joining me. It was so lovely chatting with you again, and I hope we can yeah. get together soon. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And you are, once again, you're an inspiration. You were wonderful. And I love having these chats with you. So unfortunately, there were some poorly timed tech issues at the end of Coffee Chat today when Alex was thanking me so nicely and so genuinely, and I felt so bad. So I wanted to prop on here and do a proper ending. Alex, thank you so much for joining me on Coffee Chat today. You were such an incredible talent and inspiration in human. And it's always such a pleasure chatting with you. I so look forward to seeing you on your upcoming role in Mayors of Kingstown. I'm so excited for you. I hope all of you that are watching will go and support Alex too. All of her links are below. And if you haven't checked out the previous coffee chats yet, I highly suggest you do that. Have an amazing day, everyone. And I will see you on the next coffee chat.